Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a great day so far. Um, at least it's morning where I am at. I basically woke up and decided to film this so that I could work on a project during the day because I think I have to rip back. And I don't know, I just have a lot of projects going on. So I wanted to uh, throw in an extra podcast episode this month. Uh, that way I don't have to uh, take up more of your time in one single episode where I'm talking about a million different things. Um, I just wanted to focus on a few. And um, I am outside today, so I apologize if it's a little bit noisier than normal. Um, I've I've done what I could with the microphone and the sound, but there's only so much I know how to do. Uh, so please bear with me if cars drive by and um, just enjoy the birds chirping. I know that that's, um, there's a lot of trees over here, so uh, you might be hearing that. But anyway, uh, my name is Abby. I forgot to say that in the beginning. My name is Abby and welcome back to the So Homie podcast. This is my space where I share about my knitting and crochet journey, all of the projects I'm working on, and I am, sorry, there's a car coming. Sorry, but I am uh, dabbling in the design world, which I actually have a project to show you that I designed. And yeah, I'm just really happy about that. So I hope you're into that sort of thing. And um, I think that's all that I'd like to start with, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess I can start with what I am wearing. So yesterday morning was the first time in like a year since it has been cold. Not a year, I guess, but since the springtime. And um, it's mid-September now, and I don't know, it has been extremely hot, but yesterday it was Basically, it's not cold, but 70 degrees Fahrenheit about, um, like pretty much all day. But in the morning, it was even chillier. And uh, this morning, um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit warmer, but it's still a little chilly. So I put on my cardigan, and this one does not have a name. I, I made this up a couple years ago, and it's one of the most comfortable things ever. I wear it around the house all the time. It was crocheted, I think it was called the Grit Stitch. And um, I had bought Amy Herzog's sweater book. Um, I know that she has a lot and I should have grabbed it, but it was, I'll link it below so that you know which one I'm talking about. But I just really wanted to try my hand at designing my own clothing. And since I've been crocheting for a while, I was like, why not try to crochet it rather than knit the, sweater or cardigan so i i did research a lot on how to even do this and i decided to do a drop shoulder um, style sweater because it seemed the easiest um, and honestly i think it is it's just like the simplest construction it's basically just a box where you have you know a big rectangle for your back and then you can uh, make two smaller rectangles for the front um, for a cardigan that is and then you can seam those together or sew them together along the seam or you can keep the shoulders attached like you can uh, make the back side and then pick up stitches and crochet along the side and go to the front and then do the same thing for the opposite side i opted for three different pieces i had the back piece two front pieces and then the fourth and fifth piece were the sleeves and I think I, I made these in rectangles. I actually did some shaping. Um, I don't know if you can see that at all, but it was like a trapezoid before. And then I seamed it along the bottom and I did a nice ribbed cuff. And this thing is like a blanket. <laughs> like Um, sorry, that was probably the worst modeling ever. I'll try to put in some footage of me just wearing this. Um, and then I think it's really funny because this one only has, it only has one pocket on one side. That was literally all of the yarn that I had left because I had decided to, um, to make um, a border along the entire cardigan uh, because I didn't like just the raw edges of the grit stitch. It just looked unfinished to me. And so I decided to put a small ribbed border along 
um, you know, the collar, just like a, around the whole like front side of it. Oh, and then the there is ribbing at the bottom that matches. And it was such a fun make. I remember designing it in my room. I was probably watching TV at the time too, uh, but I had just graduated, I think. And I was like, I didn't know what to do with my time. And I have always loved crocheting. And so I ended up making this project and it was a lot of fun. I think that's, that, that's what I'm wearing. And yeah, I'm very excited to be wrapped up in it this morning. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a, a pattern for it. I probably wrote it down somewhere, but if you would be interested in that, um, I might be able to make a video or a little tutorial or, I mean, even write up the pattern if you'd be interested. So let me know if you are in the comment section below. Um, and the project that I will move to is my only finished object so far. And um, it's only the middle of September, so I still have plenty of time to finish a lot. But I am thrilled about these. Um, this is the pair of socks that I made. Um, so this was a pattern by Kate Atherley, and I believe it was called the Basic Rib Sock. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, and it's super, super simple to follow. Um, my motivation behind this pattern was I wanted to knit a pair of socks for my older brother for Christmas. And that's basically because every time I go home to visit, uh, because he lives in the same town as my parents, I was always working on a pair of socks and he always asks me about it. And I know that that's not his way of asking for a pair of socks, but he always mentions how uh, cool it is that I can do that and that he, he just really appreciates that. And so I thought I would make him a pair of socks for Christmas and surprise him hopefully. Um, but yeah, I came up with, well, I didn't come up with this. I just knit these socks and I really love that pattern because it is ribbed. It's a three by one ribbed um, cuff or leg as, as you will. Um, and then you do the heel flap and gusset style um, for the heel. And then um, there's the gusset there. And then you just go back into the pattern for the foot only along the top. And then the bottom is just a basic stockinette stitch. And then you finish off with a toe. And then you Kitchener the toe together. And I, seriously, I really love this pair of socks. I kind of want to keep it for myself. Um, uh, they're so, so soft. Um, I used the Zalba Ball Crazy Yarn and I do have quite a bit left over actually. I could have added more to the leg of the sock. I just didn't know how, um, how high up my brother would want it. So I tried to keep it a little bit short and, um, yeah, so I do, and I did end up with quite a bit left over and I'm not sure, I don't think I have enough for it. it Full pair of socks but maybe a scrappy pair I could do uh, for myself but uh, one thing I liked about Kate Atherley's pattern is that she had several different sizes she had recommended shoe sizes with the number of cast on stitches and I just think that that it that was I guess is exactly what I was looking for I didn't know how many stitches to cast on I didn't know how long to make the foot of the sock for my brother so it's helpful to have that guideline and it was just a bonus that it was free and I found that in a free pattern. I was getting ready to purchase uh, another pattern, but uh, whenever I saw that, I was like, I'll give it a try, see if it works. And then um, it is also very helpful that my boyfriend has or wears the same shoe size as my brother. I don't know if, I don't think their feet are shaped the same way, like at all, but at least like the length, I, I could get, you know, a general idea. So I did try these on him and they fit. So I have high hopes that these will fit my brother at Christmas. Um, so I, one more thing about the yarn. I just love the self-striping yarn. And this one, this was the first sock that I made. And I really love the look of this one. Um, just like the way that the colors fade into each other. And then this one is really cool because that darker color 
you can see that that darker color kind of makes it look like it was you know a contrasting heel but it just worked out that that was the portion of the yarn um, that I got to for the heel flap uh, that it kind of that it kind of gave that effect but I got something totally different on this sock so this one um, has the lighter color um, more at the top of the sock and then it kind of goes down and the dark portion that was on the heel flap of the other sock actually became part of the gusset and then the, the foot of the sock so i just like um that whenever you use yarn and i don't know it's the self-striping you never know what you're going to get at least all the time i know that there are some that if you use the exact like they're dyed the exact same way or like as exact as you can get. And then you just uh, pull from the same part of the skein and your socks will be nearly identical. And um, this one wasn't like that. It just said to pull from the outside. And so I did that. And once I had the sock that I wanted, I just cut it and started again. I didn't even try to make them identical. I don't think he'll mind um, it's socks. He's not the type of person to just go, you know, two totally different socks like two totally different colored socks but since it's the same colorway i think he'll like it and these colors really are fitting for him and i am so sorry if you can hear that weed eater that is so annoying <laughs> um sorry i'm gonna take a sip of my tea before it gets super cold this is one of my favorite mugs. I got it from Cotopaxi, uh, Colorado, back whenever I went on a river rafting trip. Uh, back whenever I worked one summer for the Girl Scouts of America. So this was one of my souvenirs and I love it. I use it almost every day. And then it's just a simple lemon tea. Um, but yeah. um, sorry, I'm checking my notes because I think that was, that was the only finished object that I had. So now, oh, my other finished object is, I actually showed it in the previous episode and I might put it in the next episode that airs, but um, I finally came up with a name for it and maybe I'll just surprise you guys uh, whenever I show you, but I am still working on writing up that pattern. Um, the stitches that it uses, um, it was totally new to me. Like I totally made them up. And so it's hard to write down because the way I first wrote it made sense at the time. But now that it's been a little bit since I've actually crocheted it and I know how to do it. I'm just trying to make sure that the wording is right so that anybody could do this because I don't want to confuse anybody. Um, I actually did make a video, actually, a tutorial that's called the Enlarged Diamond Waffle Stitch, and it is a crochet stitch. And um, if you want to check that one out, I'll link it below. But that one is, or that tutorial shows you how I made the diamonds for the wall hanging that I showed in the previous episode. So if you're curious and what that looks like, uh, check out my most or my previous episode and then um, I will show it in the next episode that I film. I'm just not sure when that will be. But yeah, so I guess we can go ahead and go on to the whips. And the first one I want to show you is called the Thea Top. And this is by I think her pattern says Pamela M. I will find her Ravelry, uh, like the link to the pattern. I found this through Ravelry, so I will link that part. Um, it's just a very simple um, tank top. Um, hers is white, and I actually got a cream color, so it will hopefully look similar to the one in the photograph. But I have really been on a kick of finding Christmas presents and working on those, and my mom is very difficult. <laughs> Uh, her feet are very particular. I don't think she would want a pair of socks. Um, maybe if I asked her um, how she'd like them to fit, I could do it, but I just, her feet are very narrow and me being in a different city than her and actually wanting to surprise her with something, I don't think socks are the right option, at least for this year. So I am thinking that I will actually knit her this tank top 
I originally bought the yarn for myself, but then I found more of it. It was a clearance sale actually at Joanne uh, Fabric and Craft Stores um, here in my town. And I don't know, I they had the same colorway. And so I just grabbed so many of those because it's a cream color. Actually, I can show you. It's this cream color and it's a 90% cotton, 10% acrylic blend, I believe. Uh, but this color is so neutral i was like i could use that for a lot of different things and it was seriously only two dollars is less than two dollars and fifty cents uh usd and i don't know that's a steal i think they're 50 gram balls i can't remember i think it's 102 yards and um this one i didn't bring the ball band um it's if i remember it's k and c or something like that. And it's element is the yarn line, like the way that uh, the yarn is, uh, they have a lot of different other types of yarn and a lot of different colorways, but this is the one that I was drawn to. And again, it was clearance. So I got a super, super good uh, deal on this, uh, but I wanted to use it for the Thea top. After I found that one, I was like, Ooh, it's a worsted weight yarn. This one's a worsted weight yarn. Sorry, I feel a sneeze coming on. Um, but yeah, this one was a worsted weight yarn. So I was trying to find something like a pattern that used worsted weight yarn, but I didn't want to make a sweater. I was thinking a tee, but I think the worsted weight yarn would be too bulky. I'm not sure it, it might actually work okay, but I decided to try this tank top. It's uh, very loose and flowy. So yeah, this is just a project that I wanted to try out for my mom and actually for myself because I ended up with a lot of yarn. So I'm going to see how much yarn it takes for my size tank top and then I'll see if I have enough left for my mom's. Um, if And I want to test out whether or not it fits the way that it does in the photograph because um, I can imagine myself wearing this, but I'm definitely a lot bustier than the model in that photograph or in the pattern and I'm wondering how the top of it will stretch and then the bottom part be loose because I do have that issue where some things will be really tight up top and then it just like flows underneath like it's very loose and then it just looks like I'm wearing a tube so I'm wondering how this one will work I'm hoping that it works out just fine with the size that I chose but anyway, um, that's a little bit on that pattern and a little bit why I chose that one. Um, but yeah, hopefully it works out and it can be something I can give my mom because again, she is a little bit picky. She wouldn't say that she is, but she's a little bit picky, especially like for handmade things, I guess. She doesn't wear hats. The socks, I already explained. Mittens, she already has a pair that she wears. Um, and you know clothing a sweater i would do but she she doesn't like to be hot so sweaters aren't really her go-to they're too hot for her and a cardigan same thing and i don't know i just don't want to waste it wouldn't be wasting i really enjoy knitting so it wouldn't be a waste but i would hate to make something that she doesn't love and that she feels like she has to keep but she won't actually wear so anyway <laughs> Let's move on, I guess that's enough on that one. So the Thea top, I started it and already new techniques that I have never done before. Um, I, I can't speak too much about this one, this pattern because it is, um, it, you do have to purchase it, but um, this is what it looks like so far. Um, you start on the back side, so that's, that's what I've done. And I really like the way that this yarn is working up and sorry, it's very, um, it's, uh, rolling, I guess, uh, just because there's not a lot of shape to it just yet. And that's just what stock in it does. But I, this is what I have so far and I've been working on the shaping for the arms, but the pattern said to leave a selvage stitch. So where that's basically. Um, this is a stockinette, so I'm, I'm not working in the round just yet. So you're just knitting back and forth, back and forth. And so it's a row of knit, a row of purl, a row of knit, a row of purl. And then you just repeat that so that you get the stockinette pattern. 
Sorry, there's a car. But she says to leave a selvage stitch, so that's where you knit the first and last stitch of every row. But what I'm getting is um, like these knots. Like, I don't know if I'm doing it correctly because I have it on the other side as well. Like maybe I'm not doing it right, I don't know, but I'm afraid that like I can feel it. I'm afraid that that goes under my arm. I know it's on the back side, but if that's rubbing on me, I just, I'm afraid that I won't like it and that it will just, you know, rub on me, make me itch or maybe even hurt. So, um, also, I'm not sure that I did the increases right because I have like a giant gap along the side. And I know that you add, you go back and pick up stitches along the armholes so that you can add a little bit uh, more length. And I think it's a ribbing or something. Um, I do know that you do that, but um, I was trying to play around with it to see if I could get it to work. But if I do that, I'm just going to have these giant holes along the, the seam. And I'm not really into that look. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure that I'm happy with it. So I'm thinking of ripping back completely, which is so sad. Um, I was really getting a lot of progress. But um, I, I think that it'll be worth it. I want something that I like and that I'll wear. And I really think that that's going to bother me. So I think I'm going to go back and work it without the selvage stitch. Keep the number of stitches she has. Just, um, yeah, keep out that selvage stitch. Hopefully that will fix the problem. I think that it will. And then I will research on the M1R and M1L um, increases because I think I might have switched them. Or, yeah, I did something wrong because I don't think I should have a giant hole right there. Um, if you have any tips on that, or if that is, like, I guess common, uh, let me know. And I would love to know how to fix that. Like, do I use a different increase or, you know, is there a little trick on how to get that to look right? Um, I would love to hear your thoughts on that one. And, yeah, that pretty much is this project, um, the Thea Top. And, again, I will link that one. I... I'm really impressed by the way that it was written. I'm just glancing through it. I've read through it just to see the construction of it. And it's very simple. I think, I mean, I've actually never made a tank top or a tee um, knitting anyway. And yeah, I'm really excited to see how this one turns out. Um, hopefully it will fit. And yeah, that brings me to my last project that I want to share with you guys. First, one more sip. So the last project is, surprise, surprise, another pair of socks. <laughs> I bought this yarn. It's a Patton's Croy, and I have the ball band. Um, yeah, it's a Patton's Croy sock yarn, and the colorway is brown rose marl. And I only bought one because this was before I really knew much about socks. And generally people will say you need 100 grams of sock yarn to make a complete set of socks. Of course, that depends on the size of your foot, you know, the uh, length that you want the, the leg of the sock. And, you know, there's a lot of different factors that go into that. Sorry, I'm gonna pause, there's a car coming. FedEx driver. <laughs> um, anyway, so I, I bought just one skein and I tested this out one time to see if one skein of the Patents Croy sock yarn, so it's a 50 gram ball, if that would give me two pairs of ankle socks or like shorty socks. It didn't work. I ran out at the toe. I literally needed just like probably 10 10 more grams or less uh, to finish off that toe. But yeah, I did find out from my size foot, I can't get a full pair of ankle socks um, out of one ball. So since I, I knew that going in, I had only one ball of this and I wanted to try out um, 
my own thing. Uh, see if I could get a pair of socks or yeah, out of one one skein. And so I had uh, this sock yarn, which is uh, another Patent Croy. Um, this one was the colorway of flax, and I got it from Hobby Lobby. Um, and I had this one left over from a pair of socks I knit for my boyfriend, actually, um, that unfortunately are probably, <laughs> they look horrible, but I was just beginning. Anyway, I have this left over and it goes uh, with it. It almost matches this one. It's just less marled. And so I decided to use it for the contrasting heel and toe. I figured if I could knit the sock and I was measuring this to make sure that I would still have roughly 27 grams, uh, just to give me, you know, enough, uh, enough room for error just in case. Um, so I knit this sock. I decided, I don't know if I'm making sense, I'm sorry. It is early in the morning. I'm gonna to try to explain what I meant by this. So I I have this sock and I knit this sock. I wanted an ankle pair, but I wanted the cuff to come up a little bit further for sneakers that I have that are like high tops. And then I have these little booties that come up a little bit higher. So I wanted these to come up, um, not necessarily to show, but at least keep my ankles from getting rubbed uh, by my shoes. And so, I decided that I would just uh, knit on my nine inch circular needles and just make a tube um, because I wanted to try the afterthought heel method again. And I've only done that one time before and I actually have it with me because I was trying to figure out the placement. Um, so this is one of my Cordyceps socks by Penrose Knits and I have mentioned this in several episodes <laughs> so i won't speak more about it it's just that uh, this one is actually a color work sock and then you use the afterthought um, heel method for adding the heel so you just knit in a tube and then you put half of your um, stitches on hold you snip uh, some of it pick it back and then you have a hole in your sock and you add your heel there um, so i learned how to do that from this pattern from the lovely laura penrose and I decided to try my hand at it for myself, um, you know, trying to go off of what I remembered. And so I knit this sock with, um, yeah, with the main colorway and I just knit it in a tube. And as I was going, I was weighing this skein of yarn to make sure that I would have enough for my other sock. So I didn't want to get it too long. Um, yeah, I didn't want it to get this sock too long and then run out of yarn for my next sock. So I was knitting, 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 and then I was weighing this to make sure that I had, I guess, I think I was shooting for 27 grams. I actually have more than that because um, I didn't realize how far this yarn would go. And so I ended up stopping because I was just really excited to get started on the heel. And actually what I did so I made sure to leave enough enough yarn here just in case I needed to add more to the foot. So I actually still had, um, I just added the toe last night, but where this pink yarn is, that line, that was the last little bit of the main colorway that I used. And so I actually had those stitches still on hold. And then I uh, went in, I added the heel, which actually worked out pretty well. Um, the only thing is, I don't necessarily like how pointy it is on my heel. I don't know if that's like avoidable. Um, if you're familiar with afterthought heels, maybe let me know. But um, whenever I put it on my foot, it kind of sticks out just a little bit. I know that this side I can fix uh, whenever I leave in the end, but this side I'm not really sure. But anyway, so I. I added the heel last night. I tried the sock on and it was actually almost perfect. I went ahead and added a couple more rows um, of the main colorway and then I picked up or I just added the toe. And now all I have to do is untangle the yarn and um, I just have to Kitchener stitch uh, the toe together and then I will have one complete sock. And I don't know, this was a lot of fun. I am so excited about this one. It just, I don't know, it just came to me and I mean, it's just a vanilla sock, honestly, with um, a two by a two by one ribbing at the top. I just wanted a very simple sock. 
uh, see if I could do it and um, get it to make, you know, to fit my foot. Sorry, I'm stumbling on my words this morning. Um, it is early. But yeah, I'm just super happy with the way that this one turned out. So I will hopefully... So I'm hoping in the next episode, I will have a completed pair of socks to show you guys. But yeah, that's my last, that is my last uh, project or uh, work in progress to show you guys. And um, I, I think I have just a little bit more time. Um, I did go to the store whenever I was in, uh, whenever I went to town. Um, the other day, or to visit my parents, they have a bigger Joanne store there, and so I actually, I forgot my socks, not my socks, my yarn to make socks. I forgot my needles and my ball of yarn at my apartment, and I was so upset, so upset. And so I was there for only like a day, or like two days. So I was there one night, and then I stayed the night, and then I left the next afternoon, um, I had gone in for an interview actually. And so I, yeah, anyway, in between, after the interview, I was just like, I need to knit, I need to knit. And so I went, I sought out a store. I found, um, I finally found some of their sock yarn. Wasn't a hundred percent happy with their choices. They actually had very little sock yarn. And so I ended up getting two skeins um, let me show you. Um, actually, the other one I was playing with, um, I let my boyfriend pick out a pair because I've been making a lot of socks. And, of course, <laughs> he wants another pair because, again, the first pair that I made are probably, they're very ugly. I think they fit him. They're just very ugly. And so um, he picked out this one, this yarn. And it's a Patton's Croy yarn, and it's cadet colors is the colorway. Um, I got two of these. Uh, but yeah, this one will be for my boyfriend. But then I ended up going to Hobby Lobby because I wanted to see if they had any metal needles. Um, I wanted the circular ones to try Magic Loop, but the I guess the big box stores, they don't actually carry the, like, the size that I need, like a 2.25 millimeter or a 2.5 millimeter, um, they don't carry the that small of a needle size. So I guess I'll have to find those online. Uh, but anyway, that's really why I went to Hobby Lobby was to see if they had it because Joanne didn't. Well, of course, Hobby Lobby had to sell on their yarn, 30% off all yarn, and they don't have a coupon anymore. So that's always the best time to buy yarn. And I walked out with a lot more so um they had this this colorway it's just like these pastels i don't know they're they're a lot of fun i've seen them they didn't really call to me at first i don't know like the first time that i saw them but i think they're fun uh, this one's called sidewalk chalk stripes and i just love a good self-striping yarn and i think this this one will work up really nicely um, and then I also got this one, which I really like the colors on this one. These stream a little bit, maybe more fall. Uh, this might be my next cast on. Um, so this one's called Mid-Century Stripes. And then, oh, I really like this one too. Um, this one's really pretty. Just the greens and the blue and yellow. This is probably my favorite that I found. But this one's called 50 Stripes. And then um, I bought another one of these. I actually already have one. I got this one at clearance at Joanne uh, several several weeks ago. Um, but then, you know, I was like, one ball of yarn isn't enough for my socks unless I do a contrasting heel and toe. But since I had this one, I went ahead and grabbed another one just so that if I decided to make a full, you know, a, a long leg on my socks, I would have it. And so this one's called Blue Striped Rag. Um, I really like that one. And then, sorry, my last two, promise. Um, these are, these were new to me. I've never, 
I like I've seen them. I just wanted to try them out. It's called Cotton Collage by Premier. This one's a colorway uh, C Multi. And then it has a color number. Um, but it's 46% 40 cotton, 33% superwash, merino, and then 12% polyamide, 9% PBT. Um, I don't know. It's just a different blend. I've never tried that before. I haven't knit socks with a cotton or like with a yarn that had cotton in it. So I was curious about that. And um, this was just dark. And then they have a, like a picture of what it would look like worked up. And it looks very pretty. Um, and this one actually has more yardage. It has 246 yards compared to 166 on this. It seems like, I don't know if it'll work up differently. It does seem stretchier, so I'm curious. I did probably make a mistake and only buy one each. <laughs> I was thinking shorty socks and with a higher yardage, I was thinking I'd be able to get that. So I guess we'll see. Um, oh, and then uh, this is the same type, but this one's called Brown Multi. And that's what it will look like worked up. Um, so I am just really excited. Obviously, I have socks on the brain and they're just very easy projects for me. And, you know, with winter coming, fall coming, or almost here, you know, what better time than to knit socks? So I think that's all that I have to share with you guys. And yeah, that just brings me to the end of this episode. I want to thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to check out uh, my channel for other, you know, tutorials, tips, it's the same place, uh, just different playlist, I guess. Uh, just go to my main channel and you'll find all of the new tutorials and videos that I have there. Also, you can find me on Instagram as so.homie or on Ravelry as sohomietx. And you can also stop by my Etsy shop to look at the patterns I have. And I will uh, link all of those down below for you guys so you can check them out. But I guess I will say goodbye. I probably need to get to work. So uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Until next time, bye.